uh, Ian Gray, uh, Associate Director for Facade Consultancy at BB7. The impact of the Building Safety Act, uh, it's kind of a, a two-part uh, question currently. Uh, the first element that's really affected us has been a greater demand on proof and evidencing, um, particularly at the earlier stages of the design. Uh, traditionally, you would have uh, your design and it would evolve from Reba 2, Reba 3, and it, everything would kind of crystallize towards Reba 4, and then you would get to the specialist designer coming in. And then after that, it was, right, now the design's getting done, and we're seeing a lot more proof, uh, requirement for proof of that much earlier in the process, really driving the early stage development of the project. Um, also, it's kind of affecting our solutions when it comes to uh, what products are we selecting. Um, so, for example, we're in Shuko now. Shuko has a lot of test evidence, and that is becoming a lot more appealing to clients in the, in the fact that we can say, well, we have existing proof this works. The second part really is uh, a greater drive on competence, um, and a lot of people will think, oh, well, okay, so the drive on competence is to do with site installation, and we're finding that it's not site installation, it's everything. And it's really affecting us in terms of how we bid for work, uh, what we're doing in terms of driving uh, ourselves forward and proving that we are competent as consultants to help advise our clients. Uh, we need to be uh, just as robust as anyone else in the industry uh, in making sure that we know what we're talking about. We're meant to be the advice to our clients and how can they trust us? We need to evidence that. Those are probably the two current main changes. I also see that there is a potential big future impact coming, which is uh, all to do with um, Gateway 2 and the design, the design freeze, as it were. There is not a lot of evidence currently um, as to exactly what the building safety regulator wants at the Gateway 2 point. We aren't there yet in terms of understanding because it, the building safety regulator has only been in existence for a couple of months. But there is definitely a fear in the industry that we're going to move towards this is design freeze at Gateway 2 and now it can't change and it's locked. And we just don't know to what extent that is yet. But if it is a locked in, uh, this is the design and you have a change control process but it's very rigid, it could fundamentally change how we procure projects and how we help advise and where we, and especially subcontractors get involved. So I can just see that being a massive change industry-wide. Um, it depends on which way it goes, but it could be the big one. We have uh, always been very collaborative with the industry. Um, we need to understand what products are out there. We need to understand they're robust. We need to work with specialist designers. Our clients are asking us, who, who do you know in the industry? And who do you know who you trust in the industry? Uh, and the only way we can do that is to be collaborative, uh, to understand what, uh, what specialist designers are capable of, to understand what they offer to the industry, to understand what products are out there, and can we wholeheartedly recommend them or, or not? But don't get me wrong, uh, facade consultants do sometimes get painted with the brush of being sort of the grim reapers of the industry a little bit. We, we are employed to poke chinks in armor. We're, we're there to pull apart data and understand where the problems lie. Um, and we do sometimes get a bit of a bad name for it. But what I would say is it's always done with the best of intentions to mitigate risks for clients as well as specialist designers and product manufacturers. So it's one of those where I think it ultimately, in, in terms of the Building Safety Act, I don't think a lot is dramatically changing other than we are potentially getting asked more, for, we're getting more requests for collaboration rather than the other way around. We're starting to get product uh, manufacturers come to us and say, we really need to make sure that we're above board here. Could you come and have a chat with us? Uh, lend us your expertise and your knowledge to, to help us develop. Um, and that's, that's quite uh, a nice, I wouldn't say refreshing because it, it did happen, but it's happening more. In general, uh, we would be looking at items in a fair amount of depth. That's the reason why we are part of the design process. So we would be looking beyond a, a, a product passport or a BBA certificate or something along those lines. And we'd be looking to drill down into the depths of how did you get there? Why is that product suitable for this application? And what standards does that then apply to? And have you met those standards and criteria? And really drilling down into the technical detail uh, because there's always nuance. Um, 
every test certificate that you look at, it will be, it's not as simple as pass or fail. It will always have something where they say it's pass or fail, but the extrapolation criteria to say it's not been tested exactly in the same position you're designing for, can I extrapolate that data or not? Can I look at how much uh, bigger the span of this curtain wall is versus what was tested? And do I believe that it is applicable? Um, and not only do I believe it, but can I prove it? And that's, that's where we get involved and how we benefit the process uh, in that way. In terms of the Building Safety Act and how that's changed things, um, again, I, I feel that it's not changed things dramatically. What it is asking for is a robust approach. It is asking for more evidence, more basis of why have you got to that point. We're, asking, we're going to be asking for it anyway. Um, so it's pro from that perspective, not a lot has changed for us, but we are seeing uh, a lot of emphasis on that and emphasis on that in particular when it comes to uh, the potential for value engineering. If you're looking at changing a product in any way, shape or form, the, the evidence base, which has always been, you need to prove this works, is just going to be much more robust now. Uh, and we, we form as Fazal Consultants a part of that process in making sure that we understand it and we agree with it and we are informed of the risk and therefore the client is. How has BB7 positioned itself to meet the requirements of its clients and duty holders uh, under the new Building Safety Act regulations? So this applies to facade consultants, but it does sort of also apply to BB7's other side, which is the fire, fire consultancy, but the approach is very much the same. And in both sides, we're looking at uh, things in terms of uh, positioning ourselves to be more focused on the client's needs across the whole process uh, of design development. So right from REBA stage one, all the way through to REBA stage seven. That continuity is where we see uh, the, big, the biggest benefit and the biggest value can be added uh, to, a cl to clients and to a project in terms of making sure that it's robust, well-engineered, safe, uh, and is, has got the longevity and the legacy that you're not going to be coming back to that building in 10 years going, oh my God, this is leaking, terrible, uh, unsafe, etc. That's where our ideal lies uh, in terms of um, REBA stages one to seven. Uh, we've also had to work on developing some new documentation uh, and new product lines and services in order to uh, essentially support the new regime. So elements such as the building safety case as facade consultants, we are part of that process in helping the relevant uh, principal designers and uh, fire engineers and all of, all of the other moving parts that, that form part of this um, all coming together. We are part of that process. So it is something that we are getting positioned in more. In terms of risks, um, we do see that there is a greater risk coming in um, with regards to, again, post Gateway 2. Uh, we're seeing that uh, things are uh, potentially more risky where someone has evolved the whole process of the design up until a certain point and then we're coming in and taking over after Gateway 2, especially if we fundamentally have issues and disagreements with what has come before or we see risks that someone else hasn't now we always would have had to flag those risks before and there, and that's always been a, a something that responsibly we should be doing but with the new measures and the new regime and the the, the way of enacting that change control it makes that uh that engagement uh a a lot more critical but b a lot more costly uh in terms of it's got the potential if there is a fundamental disagreement we can't sit idly by, but in order to change it, you might have to go through a whole change control process, which is a lot of extra time, a lot of issue to clients. So from that perspective, absolutely, we should be raising it as we always have. But in my personal view, I think it means that we require a, a more experienced person in the room to be robust enough with, uh, with, with sort of that kickback and that, no, this isn't right and I need to stick by my guns uh, on this is needing to be changed. So that's a potential wrinkle that it, again, the process has only been in since October, but it's something that's gonna have to evolve. Personally, I think that uh, bodies like the JCI are absolutely critical to what we're 
uh, looking to achieve as an industry. And it's important that the baseline that we set is defined by all of the stakeholders that understand their own working uh, requirements. I cannot put my shoes in the sh myself in the shoes of an estimator, for example, or um, the labourer on site, or um, the guy who's operating uh, the tower crane. I, I cannot do those things. I can sympathise, but I can't empathise. I think it's one of those where I think things like the JCI, where it brings all of that knowledge together, uh, is absolutely key and critical. I also think that it's key that it exists from the perspective of setting that base level for all those different operations that exist within the industry. Sadly, we've all seen that the industry has fallen short on occasion. I don't think that it's always the fault of certain people. It's the way that the industry has evolved. Um, but what I do think is that it breeds a responsibility for us all to help everyone get to that level. And I think, again, bodies uh, like the JCI are fantastic at creating that uh, that environment for us all to all to get there. It's also worth noting, just as a final point, that um, they are great at establishing minimum, but importantly, measurable criteria, which is something that there's obviously a lot of debate around. Um, how do you how do you prove competence? I, I think having bodies like the JCI and GQA and all of the, all of that, those associations, they create an environment for crossover knowledge that makes you better than the minimum and it makes you it makes it something where you can be competent measure your competent but also give you room to better it to be better than the minimum to 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 be the best that you can be in it